Today, new deathbed secrets are being revealed from OJ's final days, just after he made his final appearance on social media two months ago. My health is good. I mean, obviously, I'm dealing with some issues, uh, but hey, I think I'm just about over it. His health apparently began a rapid decline, and he succumbed to cancer. Family and friends began visiting him over the weekend, including the two children he had with his ex-wife, Nicole, Sydney, and Justin, now both in their 30s. TMZ reports between 30 to 50 people saw him in person. Harvey Levin says there was an unusual final request. Visitors were required to sign a non-disclosure agreement. The NDA is kind of irrelevant because the only thing that would be obviously interesting if there was a deathbed confession. I am absolutely convinced there was no such confession. O.J. Simpson, in his mind, has recreated reality and believes he didn't commit the murders. O.J. was famously acquitted of the murder of Nicole and her friend Ron Goldman, but a decade later, he made this stunning confession when he sat down with Judith Regan, who edited his If I Did It book. I hate to say this, but this is not even that Right. It may have been hypothetical, but O.J. repeatedly spoke in the first person. I remember I grabbed the knife. I do remember that portion. Of it. You write about removing a glove. Obviously, I must have because they found a glove there. In a strange twist, a judge ordered rights to the book awarded to the Goldman family to help satisfy the $33.5 million civil judgment against O.J. With interest, it eventually ballooned to more than $100 million. So whatever happened to O.J.'s multi-million dollar fortune built on football, endorsements, and movies? O.J. Simpson has always had money. He was really good at hiding it. And he certainly did a good job doing that from Fred Goldman because he was making money that uh, Fred Goldman could never get at. So TBD on what, if anything, the Goldmans can recover, what they cannot recover is their son. This case is the one that singularly stands out in my mind. Famed crime journalist Pat Lalama worked with Harvey side by side as the trial unfolded. It was about race, wealth, influence, domestic violence. That famous word, privilege. Privilege. During the trial, former extra correspondent Phil Schumann was working for Pat's competition. He spoke with Melvin. What do you remember most about that experience? The thing that I've never forgotten, Melvin, is I was in the courtroom on the verdict day and I was sitting right behind the Goldman family and Kim Goldman, when they announced the not guilty verdict, let out just this wail, this cry, this of anguish that I've always remembered. <laughs> It was so powerful, but Fred Goldman had an interesting quote. It was, um, no great loss. 